Ladies and gentlemen, Ronan Odu. Thanks, Iran. And uh, fantastic organization and movement that that Iran has started up in Cork. It's fantastic to see. Thanks also to Joe for the venue and a very hard act to follow. But um, let's see. There we go. So I'd just like to talk one on Odul. It's my name. I'm in UCC, as Edan said, for the last six years or so. Um, but I'd like to talk to you just about the story so far, Ignite Graduate Business Innovation Centre and Programme. Um, Okay, so there's a lot of talk about entrepreneurship, you know, and the smart economy and, 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 and that. There's a lot of words about that, there's a lot of policy documents, and yet I guess you've got to hand it to the previous government for, you know, talking about the smart economy and talking that up, and it really sensitised people to the importance of new business development and that. Um, and it's, it, it was reflected then in the innovation task force, and Europe are talking about it in terms of the importance of, you know, supporting young, innovative companies and human capital and all that stuff. But the important thing for us in UCC is that is just you know that we would do something that we just do something you know it wasn't it wasn't going to be perfect that we would actually step in and actually do something about this, because clearly you know the status quo that we have you know is not good enough in this you know new economy that we have and the challenges that we have in that so we have to do something different and uh, you know we we stopped listening to people who said ah well sure we have this for years sure it's going to work anyway and we can do this no it's not we do need you know a change and you know, to implement something uh, and learn by doing. So we uh, set up Ignite. Ignite is a center to, for recent graduates of any discipline. And the purpose of Ignite is to put them, those graduates on a path to success in terms of setting up their own business, to remove any barriers that you know, may uh, arise, to keep the naysayers away, because there are plenty of them, and actually focus on what can be, what, how, how they can be successful. So it really is to ensure that they can be the best that they can possibly be in the new environment, to provide the infrastructure, the culture, enabling them, everything, all that stuff, so that they can be successful. And if they're not successful, that they can try again and actually learn by, by that. So that's, that's what Ignite is about. Um, so uh, why and what are the objectives? Let's see. Okay, the key objectives of Ignite is to enable graduates, simply, of any discipline, from any higher education, college, university, to set up a business, to create jobs, um, to create new businesses, and to develop new competencies in graduates. So they come through, they're the brightest and the best, they, we can compete with the best globally. There's, it's a level playing field, there's no reason why we can't compete with the best in California or China or whatever, but it's to provide that infrastructure and, and develop that culture over time and to strengthen entrepreneurship nationally. I mean, there is an absolute national imperative here to you know, pursue economic growth and actually talk things up and get things going. So that's what we're about in a small way. Um, Ignite, it provides funding and everything is free of charge. So you know, the importance of you know, setting these graduates on a pathway to success, on the highway to success and removing all the barriers can be understated is really, really important. And provide them with some element of funding um, because unlike others who may set up their business, there are great examples in the Cork region of those who've maybe left Motorola with a redundancy package and managed to set up a new business, and it's fantastic success stories. But in most cases, recent graduates aren't fortunate enough um, in, in that regard. So it provides some element of funding. So Ignite now, and it's the way it's developed in, in the last 24 months, and we only took in our first intake uh, 24 months ago, and I see Mike is here. Mike was part of that intake, Mike McGrath. So just 24 months ago, actually next week, we took in our first graduates, January 31st, in fact, um, 2011. And it's about providing you know, business incubation space in the Western Gateway Building. The image you see here on the, on the right of the slide is the Western Gateway Building. I'm not sure if many of you have been in there, but I'd encourage you just to stroll in. It's the building where the old dog track used to be on the Western Road. And it's not your typical university kind of academic building. It really is kind of like a business environment. I'm sure Mike could agree with that. There are a lot of startup companies in there. So to get space in that building, they provided with all aspects of training and, and workshop based in terms of bringing your product or service to market. Uh, mentoring is organized case by case with experienced entrepreneurs. We now have on-site business support. They get access to the university's research expertise. I mean, we are a university um, where 80 million is spent every year, won and spent every year on the latest research. So that's, that should be an environment where you have cutting edge technologies and that can be brought, brought to market. 
um, networking events, membership of Cork Chamber. Cork Chamber has been fantastic in providing free membership to the uh, participants. Um, we don't take an equity stake, so I guess a key kind of principle that we had starting off is that we would keep things as simple as possible and that we weren't going to get into kind of taking equity or anything like that. The key thing is that the entrepreneurs would be successful. That's the key thing for us. Um, and as well as that, that we would just not only you know, bring them through this program, but they would actually put them on the next rung to success in terms of actually um, becoming successful, the next, next rung on the ladder to becoming successful, commercially successful. So the National Software Centre and the directors of the National Software Centre very kindly offered every participant in Ignite a further six months in a, in a, in a business environment down in Mahan. So that was very generous of them. So we're, we're, we're guided. I guess it was important for us to have you know, the guidance of those who've been there, done that, have many, many years experience, know all the ups and downs, and the pitfalls and the challenges of you know, raising funding and you know, maybe selling equity stake or whatever, setting up their business. So we're, we're very fortunate that we have a, an advisory board who are extremely active and included on the advisory board are six CEOs with their own businesses. They've grown their own businesses. Every, each of those businesses has a global footprint. And that, that board is chaired by uh, Dick Lee Han, who has many years of uh, senior management. He set up EMC here in, in just up the road, um, that company that myself and Aidan were in, a fantastic company. And um, so Dick is there to chair that. Uh, so we, you know, for each of the advisory board members, when we asked them, I asked them individually, they all said yes. Nobody here was saying no. I mean, there's fantastic goodwill towards actually you know, doing, going the extra mile, volunteerism, you know, they're all working pro bono there. They have huge concerns to look after, but they're all giving, you know, an hour of their time each month to come into UCC and discuss Ignite and how it should, you know, develop further in that. They're giving of their time. It's, nobody said no. I mean, everybody is so willing to help out. It's, it's remarkable, and there's an awful lot more like them in the region and in the country, and only just too willing to actually um, help move things along the right way. So it's fantastic. Um, See, this, this couldn't have happened so far. And we're only on the, you know, the first two years of a journey and we have ambitious plans. Uh, it couldn't have happened in any way at all without some fantastic support from many organizations in this, in this region. Um, UCC is going through its own financial challenges and, and that, and UCC couldn't put any, any cash into this, so we had to go and raise funding ourselves to start this off. Um, EMC were fantastic in actually you know, giving a, first, you know, a down kind of, you know, installment of funding to actually get this going as were Borg Gosh, that Bob Savage and EMC, John Mullins and Borg Gosh, the National Software Centre. You see the various organisations here, Connor Healy and Cork Chamber. Um, so they enabled us to get going. Cork Bick gave their advice. We got some equipment. We got, you know, a second-hand, you know, photocopier printer from IBS. People helped us get going. And also, I must say that, you know, if you read the media, you know, a lot of public service organisations do get a bashing in the press at the moment. There's no doubt about it. However, if you look at what they can do, and the fantastic leadership in the Cork City Council with Tim Lucy, County Council with Martin Reardon, the enterprise boards in Cork with the, the CEOs like Adrian Rogers, Sean O'Sullivan, um, these people, um, and also the Bank of Ireland, have just made this thing happen. They just turned on a dime and actually, actually responded re really quickly. So they're our primary funders now. So the primary funders of Ignite now for this year and for they have commitments for the next two years to us are those you see in the top row there, City Council, County Council, Enterprise Boards and Bank of Ireland have been fantastic. So there's great leadership around the Cork area and they have an agenda which actually, you know, the, I suppose people are thinking the same way. And I'm sure there are an awful lot of others beyond what we see here who are willing to make things happen. And uh, certainly in our experience, the door has, has been open. Um, once they see some action being taken, I would think. Um, we've had about, up to now, we've had a, we, three intakes in the Ignite program. The first intake, as mentioned, was at the beginning of January, or at the end of January 2011. Um, we've had about uh, 27 companies participate. Um, we have eight in the current program. Um, we have two, 22, I guess, out of the 27 who've participated so far, including the current program, which is the third, um, still active and you know, working to develop their, their, um, their businesses across all sectors. So as I said, it's for any graduates of any discipline uh, from any college. So it's not focused on you know, science and technology. And many of the, let's say, what government might 
expect would be, you know, the biotech and ICT and that the businesses would come from those sectors. But, I mean, the strength and in terms of encouraging innovation is about getting that mix of disciplines into a room, and that's really, really important. And those talents are there. Um, so just some examples of quick success stories, quick examples of success stories so far. Seahorse Atlantic is a company which supplies, develops veterinary products, food products from seaweed, from kelp, which is very low in iodine, so it has a lot of the health benefits. And um, the uh, founder of Seahorse Atlantic is there, you can see her, Sarah Jane O'Sullivan. Um, she came into the first Ignite program and came in with the, a real interest in horses and also the benefit of having a, you know, a master's in zoology. So it was a good mix. Um, so remarkably, she developed this product, which passed all the kind of you know all the doping tests and everything else for for the the uh, horse industry, which did a very stringent testing in that regard. And the raw material for her business is kelp grown off the Kerry coast. In six weeks, they grow it off ropes. They harvest it in six weeks, and um, she's developed this unique product. And it's. It's remarkable. It's, um, uh, she's now diversified her product range, not just from, from equine products to cat and dog food. Um, she now supplies markets in Ireland, in the UK and Europe. Um, this is just in the last 24 months that it's developed from, from nothing. Um, she has two employees. She's going to hire another sales and marketing person this quarter. She's in partnership with Dingle Seaweed Company and she has the premises back down in Castletown Bear, so in, back in the region. And that's where she manufactures her, her, her product. Keen O'Connor and his horses take all her, her products, or all his horses take her products. <laughs> um, so she's on a path to success. She's investigating and she's pursuing and in negotiation with agents for, to, to, to develop her export business. And some potentials out there are you know, the camel industry out in Abu Dhabi, for example, and that's on her horizon. So it really is very rapidly, she's selling internationally already, and there is you know, that global, further global potential there. So that's Sarah Jane O'Sullivan, you can see her there with Keen O'Connor at Dublin Horse Show this year. And it fulfilled a dream for her to actually get that photograph taken and have her product in Keen O'Connor's hands. Another example of success, and Mike McGrath is here. Uh, Supply.ie, correct me Mike, uh, if there's anything here, but Mike <laughs> provides an online marketplace for businesses, delivering value provi by providing quotes uh, to save companies time and money. So it's a procurement service essentially, so Supply.ie. I suppose in, in the most recent data that Mike provided me is that it supplied over 600,000 worth of products in the month of November to client companies, saving them over you know, 100k in savings. Is that right Mike? Okay, yeah. And he now has over 1,600 customers across Ireland and the UK, and over 15,000 suppliers in Ireland signed up to uh, access markets through supply.ie. Mike also very impressively has been appointed to, e to uh, an EU Commission role as an e-tendering expert representing Ireland, and that's finding ways for SMEs to engage with public procurement and, and, and that. So Mike is here, and it's a fantastic success story so far. Mike is employing how many people? Three? Yeah. Three people at this stage. So, you know, again, generating jobs for himself and for others. And it's about, this is about graduates, you know, creating jobs for themselves, you know, being job creators and shapers rather than just job seekers. So that's an important drive uh, in Ignite. And finally, just another, sorry, I got the wrong way. Success story here is um, Portable Medical Technologies, two students who, um, uh, Kevin Bambury and Owen O'Connell did BIS, were on a project team together uh, in UCC and completed, finished the Ignite program in um, just this last, last summer, so they were on the second intake, and they provide clinical decision support applications. And one of their products, the, most, the, the, the recent one that they're working on, the current one, is OncoAssist. And they have been very successful in the next step for them, post-Ignite, was winning a slot on this health box. Um, uh, startup accelerator program for high potential medical technology companies that are based, it's a movement based in New York, Boston and now London and the first program in London they were just one of seven companies accepted onto that program um, in October just finishing up in the next two weeks, so it was an intensive three month uh, stint then on Healthbox but they have just become the first Irish company and the third company worldwide to get a mobile app CE approved um, so that's significant in, the, in their marketplace and, and they are now running pilots with Clutterbridge Cancer Centre in the UK which is one of the largest 
uh, cancer uh, centres in the UK and with the um, All-Ireland Group in terms of the oncologists. And they're in discussions with actually developing their markets further with leading hospitals in the UK and in Ireland. So that's Portmore Medical Technology. So are just some examples of success stories. Um, and that, I suppose, in terms of progress, mentioned a number of these before, but we are developing you know, our global mentors. We've impressed on every participant that it is about the global world of work. We have some fantastic ambassadors from Cork who are located internationally. Liam Casey is a name that pops up very frequently in the press here. He's been very supportive of Ignite. I would have known uh, Liam Casey uh, because PCH were, were a supplier to uh, EMC many years ago and um, probably still are. But Liam was one of the first guys I went to and said, look, what do you think of this? And he was, you know, I had a chat with him for about 20 minutes down in his office in Besborough in Mahan, and he said, look, I want to be part of this. And he was being extremely supportive in terms of guiding this um, in the background. We have other fantastic success stories. There's a young graduate from UCC, a guy called Fergus Hurley, who's based in San Francisco now. He's about 28. He's already sold his company, a company called Clickster.com, and to a company called Radium One. And he's out there and he's very willing to help out and give back and actually mentor. So we have, you know, the world is a small place and you have the, we, ha we have these connections from Cork. And so, you know, it's about, you know, really kind of, you know, working with, with these people to the benefit of, of, of Cork and its businesses and Ireland. And um, we now have Eamon Curtin. Eamon Curtin has, has came on board with Ignite on the 1st of September this year. And he's the full time program director now. And that was something that we were, we're, we're focused on continuously improving the, the program every year. And we needed that resource really in place in, in, as part of co-located with the Ignite participants to actually develop it further. And we took our third intake last October. That's the story so far. And um, I'd be glad to take any questions. Thank you.